Dear friends, hope you are doing well. Welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. So what we are going to discuss in this lecture. So in this video lecture, we are going to discuss the chronology of development of the maxillary lateral incisor. The tooth numbering system, like what is the number of this tooth and various tooth notation systems. And we are going to discuss the morphology and the important landmarks that are present on the maxillary lateral incisor. So watch this video till the end and don't forget to give us your feedback in the comments. The maxillary lateral incisor, this initiation of calcification or the crown formation, it begins around the age of one year. The completion of the enamel or the crown formation, it is completed by the age of four to five years. And the tooth, it emerge into the oral cavity when the baby is eight to nine years old. If you add just plus two, if you add plus two, then nine plus two is 11. So the root completion, it, the root it is completed by the age of 11 years because when the tooth, it emerge into the oral cavity, only two thirds of the root is formed. The remaining root, it is formed within two years. So it is around the, with the, around the age of 11 years. What is the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems? So the maxillary lateral incisor in the universal numbering system, the number of this tooth is, for the right lateral incisor, maxillary lateral incisor, the number is seven. And for the left, the number of the tooth is 10. Now in the Palmer notation system, so in the Palmer notation system, the number of the maxillary right lateral incisor is two. And for the left, the number is, left maxillary lateral incisor, the number is two. So both of these two, they are differentiated with each other with the help of this symbol. So this symbol, it indicates that this is the maxillary lateral incisor of the right quadrant. And this number, it indicates that it is the maxillary lateral incisor of the left quadrant. Now in the FTI notation system, in the FTI notation system, the number of uh, this tooth, it is designated as one, two. So the right lateral incisor, it is designated as 1, 2, and the left, it is designated as 2, 2. So it is not 22, it is 2, 2. So if you're interested to learn more about the tooth numbering systems, I have given a link of the lecture in the description of this video. So the maxillary lateral incisor, it is the second tooth from the midline. So this is the maxillary central incisor. This is the maxillary central incisor of the left side, and this is the maxillary central incisor of the right side. This is the midline. This is the lateral incisor. So this is the lateral incisor. So it is a, this is the first tooth from the midline, and this is the second tooth from the midline because it resembles the central incisor in shape so that's why it helps in the it helps or it supplements the central incisor in function and the main function of the central incisor is cutting and shearing of food so the lateral incisor it shares the same function now this the, the maxillary lateral incisor it shows the greatest variation in form so it means that it, it this the form morphology is variable so but most of the time the morphology is similar to that of the central incisor although smaller in dimension so a greater variation is observed in case of the maxillary lateral incisor among all of the teeth excluding the third molar third molar has the greatest variability among all of the teeth now we will do the labial aspect like what are the important landmarks from the labial aspect now the incisal outline. This is a picture of a maxillary lateral incisor. So this is the mesial side. And this is the distal side. Now the incisal outline of this tooth. 
it is not straight. So the incisal outline, it is slightly curved. This is the cervical line, also known as the cemento enamel junction. So the cervical line, it curves in a semicircular direction towards the root apex. So towards the root apex, it curves. The overall, the maxillary lateral incisor, it is smaller than the central incisor, but it is convex in all dimensions. So overall, it is convex both from the mesial side, distal side, and from the incisal aspect. So this angle that is formed at the intersection of the mesial surface and the incisal edge. So this is the meso incisal angle. And this angle, it is comparatively, it is rounded. It is not sharp, as sharp as it was in the, was on the central incisor. Now, this is a distal outline of the tooth. And this is the incisal edge. So the distal incisal angle, it is more rounded. So you can see it is very rounded in shape. So the root is longer than the, the size of the crown. So if in relation to the crown, the length of the root, it is more. Now in the, in the apical third of the root, it means over here, the root, it curves in a distal direction or it deflects in a distal direction, which was not in the case of a maxillary central incisor. In a maxillary central incisor, the root, it is straight. So in the lateral incisor, it curves in a distal direction. Now from the lingual aspect or from the palatal aspect, the marginal bridges uh, of this tooth, they are relatively more prominent. So this is the mesial side. Which one? Yes, this one. This is the mesial side. And this is the distal side. So these are the marginal ridges. These are the marginal ridges. So the marginal ridges, they are relatively more prominent. This marginal ridge is known as the mesial marginal ridge. And this marginal ridge is known as the distal marginal ridge. So these ridges, they are more prominent than the central incisor. This is the cingulum. So the cingulum is prominent. This convexity is known as the cingulum. It is prominent. So because of the prominent marginal ridges and the cingulum, this fossa is known as the lingual fossa. And this fossa is, is more deeper because of the prominent ridges and this convexity known as cingulum. Now, because the tooth, it tapers on the lingual aspect, therefore you can see the part of the mesial side and part of the distal side from the lingual aspect. Now, we will do the mesial aspect. The cervical line exhibit less curvature. So this is the curvature of the cervical line and the curvature is towards the incisal edge. But this curvature on the mesial side, it is less if we compare it with the curvature of the central incisor from the same aspect. Because the height of the crown, it is less. Therefore, the crown, it appears thicker at the incisal edge. At this portion of the tooth, uh, the incisal ridge, appears more thicker because the height of the crown it is less this is the root apex and the root apex it is bluntly rounded it is not sharp now from the distal aspect the tooth it is even more smaller and it is convex so it is more convex and it is smaller this is the cervical line it curves towards the incisal edge but the convexity or the curvature of the cervical line, it is less. If, you, if we compare it with the curvature of the cervical line from the mesial aspect of the same tooth, there is a developmental groove that is present um, somewhere over here on the root surface. So on the distal side, you have a developmental groove on the root surface. From the incisal, aspect it resembles a small central incisor or a canine 
So the tooth, it, it resembles a small central incisor or a canine. The cingulum, it is more prominent. And overall, the tooth, it is more convex, uh, both from the labial aspect as well as from the lingual aspect as well. So this is a brief description of the important landmarks that are present on the maxillary lateral incisor. If you like this video, please give us your feedback in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Again, thank you very much for watching and stay blessed.